towards solving a huge chapter uh, challenge that we see quite often. So I see a bunch of people in here today. Cindy, it's so great to see you again. Deidre, thank you. We are having uh, um, Deidre help us with these webinars now, so we're super excited to have her on board. Um, she is an association expert. Uh, and writes a lot of content around that I'm sure some of you have read. Um, Jeremy, Joe, John, Kim, Lisa, Tanya, so many people in here. I know we got some more filing in too, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, why are we doing this? So I do see a, a few names here at least that are, are new to the group. Um, first off, welcome. Uh, as I uh, said earlier, my name is Kyle Bazzi. Uh, this is my Bitmoji here to the left. Um, we have uh, a little bit of a joke going around our office here that uh, we communicate via Bitmojis, and Patrick uh, Algeyer from the Global Business Travel Association, um, this was his favorite Bitmoji that I sent back and forth to him. It's my Hawaiian shirt because my wife threw away all of my Hawaiian shirts one day, um, unbeknownst to me, um, because she obviously didn't like them, so I'm living vicariously through my, my Bitmoji. Hopefully you find that as funny as I do, or at least as awkward. Um, I'm the Director of Growth here at Bell Highway, and a proud Detroiter, we're, we're headquartered. Um, Bill Highway has been around since 1999. If you don't know us, check us out. We're not here to talk about Bill Highway. Um, we're here to talk about you today. So as we get started, uh, there is something very important that we need to go over, and that is about how your dues are collected, okay? So find the chat and go to meeting, and if you've been in these webinars with us, you know that I'm going to pressure you to engage, because <laughs> if you don't, you won't get as much out of it. So what I want you to do right now is go to the chat or even the questions, and we're going to monitor those. Um, so if you do have questions, but tell me real quick, who collects the money in your organization, your association? Is it collected by the chapters? Is it collected by headquarters? Or do you have a mixture of both? All right. So we're going to talk a lot about dues today. Uh, because everybody has dues, but it also pertains to non-dues revenue, all right? So go into the question and tell me who collects the money. Um, is it your chapters and then they're sending you money? Or do your uh, do you at headquarters collect money and send it back down to the chapters? Um, sometimes it's independent. You both collect it separate, but nobody shares any money. Talk to me about that. Okay, so we got Cindy. Chapters collect their own dues. Joe, chapters collect. Cindy, they do not send us any money. So Cindy, I'm guessing that HQ has its own collections as well for your guys' membership. Uh, Baleen, am I, am I saying that night? Let me, let me know if I'm saying that right phonetically. Baleen, uh, chapters collect dues. Lisa, national collects national fee and chapters collect local dues. So you got yours separate. John, each collects their own independently. Um, Cindy, yes. Okay, great. All right, so we got a bunch of answers coming in here. Awesome. We're going to be talking about a couple of different options today. So if I'm talking about something that you don't currently do, what I would suggest is learn from it because there might be um, an opportunity to switch to strengthen the organization. No, it's pronounced Blaine. Thank you for doing that. I am an awful uh, um, pronouncer of names, so I appreciate that. Um, so welcome, Blaine. I think this is the first time that I've seen you in here. It's, it's great to have you. So, there's a, I'm going to go over both here. Um, uh, the chapter is collecting the money, and we're going to talk about the problems that exist with that. All right. So number one is visibility into membership. Um, and, and everyone that has chatted in here too, James said chapters collect dues. So what I want you to do is now share with me the problems that you see at your specific association with how the money is collected, if anything. Or tell me, Kyle, it works great. Uh, but we're going to be going over some of those challenges and how you can solve those today. So let's first focus on chapters collecting money. If the chapters are collecting the money, um, here's some of the common problems that we see. Visibility into memberships, one of them. How about how, how much access do you at HQ have to data? If the chapters are collecting all that money, what information do you have? How often do you get it? Is it clean? Do they send it to you? Um, the same way, or are they sending it to you in a Word doc, and another chapter sends it to you in an Excel spreadsheet? Chapters filing taxes. Um, usually if the chapters are collecting their own money, there's a really good chance that they're filing their own taxes, and there's a really good chance that a lot of them are not, or a lot of them are not doing it properly and can lose tax exempt status. And then how about getting your money? So some of you said that 
um, the chapters then have to owe you the per capita to national. Um, how hard is that process? What is that like? How much time are you spending on just getting the money that is yours? We ran into an association that's now a client, and they were uh, they have 400 clubs and chapters, and they would collect the money and then send it up to national once a month. And it was a negotiation on how many members they had, which is crazy. They would say, well, you paid us 130 members last year at this month, and the chapter will say, well, now we have 110. And they said, that's impossible. You lost 20 chapters. No, you didn't. We saw the end of the year report. And the chapter would say, okay, we'll pay you for 120 then. And they would negotiate on the middle because the HQ had no visibility into that data. There's so much time wasted and money wasted just on doing something that could be automated. All right, let me see what some of the answers I got here. Uh, members are confused with why two payments to what they consider one association. Lisa, amen. We got to take care of that problem. The member experience has to be perfect um, and uh, or as close to perfect as we can get. If they're making two separate payments, that's a big, big problem and we're losing money uh, through that, those conversions. So Lisa, we're going we're to talk about that today. All right, conversely, HQ collects the money. Um, and there are some challenges that we see here. So how are you rebating the money? What's the, the time that goes into that and the process? Um, it's very time consuming. And, and one of the really big ones that if you collect money at HQ, here's a really big challenge you have that um, is starting to be a trend. If chapters don't realize the immediate incentive for growing membership, hosting a better event, um, you know, creating better education materials that uh, uh, grow membership locally, if they're not realizing that immediate uh, incentive, think of it, if you're familiar with like the uh, the Pavlov's dog experiment. If they don't get the uh, the reward immediately after an action, it actually de-incentivizes them to do what you want done. So it's something to think about when you have the money up at top. How are you making sure that they're immediately recognizing the value for the things that you want them to do? Okay, because it's all about that behavior that you want from your chapters to your members. Okay, so we want to talk real quick just about who collects the money because I'm going to be separating those conversations out today and I want you to ask us questions about um, you know, challenges with your current model and where you could take it. But here is something that I want you to write down because it's a mindset that is in incredibly important and it is the difference between being successful and the difference of fighting an uphill battle constantly is the, the way that money is collected, the dues challenges or fill in the blank, right, because that could be non-revenue uh, um, collection, those challenges impact your growth and revenue, okay? So if you're launching a new initiative this year like a community, you're already fighting an uphill battle if you haven't solved this problem, a unified dues process, all right? Whether, the, um, as Lisa's saying, the members are confused because they're paying two different payments, whether the chapter is collecting all the money and all the chapters are on different processors, they're on different processes, they're on different software. If HQ is collecting the money, but the way that we're rebating it down is extremely time consuming and expensive, there's so many challenges that can exist when, uh, when this is present. Okay, But at the end of the day, just in your head, understand that those challenges are impacting your growth and your revenue. Because once you can uh, um, admit that, and once you can get that story told to your organization, we can make a change. So that, I usually don't like putting a lot of words on one slide, but um, I just love the people at Mariner. And this was written by Peggy Hoffman, and it's an important trend. She wrote this back in December about uh, the study they did uh, for associations that have some kind of chapter or component structure. And there was a trend that they spotted early in the 2000s, and again is picking up steam. And, and really, I believe it's because technology is making it so much easier and cost effective to put a unified system in place. But her, their study is that 2017 will be a breakout year for innovation in the current chapter model. A big part of this is how the money is collected. Okay, uh, What's that saying? He who has the gold uh, makes the rules. She who has the gold makes the rules. Um, whoever's collecting the money, the way you're collecting the money as an organization will be uh, everything else will be built on top of that foundation, including your relationships with chapters. Now, you might be saying, Kyle, there's no way we're going to get our chapters to let us do it for them. And I'm going to call BS on that because there is a way you can change it. Um, it's not easy, but it absolutely is possible, and the outcome is extremely beneficial for the association. So 
um, one of the things that I, I highlighted, so the, the blue is my emphasis, is that the, the streamlining administrative responsibilities and enabling activities that meets the needs of members and their mission. Circle that, highlight it, print it up, give it to your executive director, give it to your head of membership. The goal is to streamline administrative responsibilities, especially for the chapters. All right? Now there's some new people here. When I say chapters, you, yours might be state affiliates or divisions or sections. That's what I mean by chapters. And then you need to enable them. So first streamline those activities and then enable them to do the activities that impact membership and mission positively. That's the goal. Uh, but we've got to get rid of the activities they shouldn't be doing first. So I felt like this was an appropriate image here. And that is... Um, you as the CRP herding cats. <laughs> um, if you're constantly herding cats, uh, collecting data or getting your money or concentrating on, you know, uh, the chapter in Iowa didn't uh, submit the, the, the annual report the correct way, so the data is all messed up. Um, we gotta we gotta automate and we gotta streamline that so this is taken care of and we can get the chapters enabled to do the activities you need. That is the whole goal. As a CRP, that needs to be your mantra, okay? All right, Kyle, get off your soapbox for a second, and let's uh, discuss what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so challenges presented by the chapters collecting and processing dues, pains that are a result of chapter dues, and we're going to be talking about end goals and solutions. So we're formatting these webinars now to present problems that we see out there, and then right after that, we're going to talk about solutions, okay? And then small, actionable, and affordable next steps you can take to make life easier. We recognize that sometimes the really big changes are sometimes insurmountable. Or maybe we just can't do those right now. So what are some small steps we can take to get us closer to that end goal in the meantime? And then also talking about those, what those larger next steps are that you can plan for. All right. Any questions there? We feeling good? Do you guys recognize this as a problem in your organization? Do you recognize it as a CRP and maybe some other people at HQ don't? Do you feel like chapters will get on board with the change? Let's talk through that, okay? Give me your questions. So the ultimate dues process goal is focusing on what really matters in delivering value to members. What is an example of that? So in your head and close your eyes, I want you to think of what a key activity is for your association, okay? Uh, we were just on the phone with um, one of the nurses associations a couple weeks ago, and their key activity was education. It was webinars. But the webinars that the chapters were doing were different than the one at HQ, so it wasn't a lie. Well, if we were able to unify the way money was collected, we could get everybody onto the same platform and deliver better value to members. All right. So I want you to think of your key activity as we're going through this webinar. Um, we need to streamline and standardize processes relieve that administrative burden of chapters, and focus on strengths and value of national and chapters relationship. This one is extremely important. Kim, providing education. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. So uh, let me give you a couple of stats here real quick because we're not alone in this. Uh, according to MGI, which does an amazing annual report, um, they had some uh, statistics. When a member belongs to both the National Association and the chapter organization, where do they send their dues payments? So you can read here, they broke up, here's the total, here's individual associations, here's trade associations, okay? Uh, and then here's, here's associations that have both trade and individual aspects. So you can see the total amount sent to the chapter, and you can see the percentage breakdowns, total amount sent to national, um, and the dues being split. I wanted to share this just because um, there's something that's really important. Just because something works for another association does not necessarily mean it's going to work for you. Okay, But you need to be constantly learning what else is out there so when the opportunity presents itself, you have options to present the organization of how to move forward. Okay, So we'll send out the link on my marketing team to the MGI report so you can read this a little bit more in depth. And then another one uh, is Mariner Management. They, they, they do annual reports too. And they actually look up... Um, uh, through who the dues are collected by, okay? So this is um, well, where dues are sent and when a member belongs to both the national and chapter organization. But who are the dues collected by? You can see 67% of Mariner's uh, report was centrally uh, collected by HQ. 
And then you have chapter is 8% each independently, which uh, I believe it was Lisa, you said that was 7%. Um, 4 percent didn't have separate dues then other and it varies all right so when you add up varies the chapter and each independently you're at about 26 percent and 67 percent that's the way I kind of looked at this report so again we'll share some of those statistics because we, we always want you guys constantly uh, uh, learning all right so let's go into some of these problems and come up with some small step solutions that we might be able to help uh, work you guys through all right so do challenges that are hurting your organizations. Fantastic image. Um, challenges impacting your time. The first is data reconciliation. Raise your hand if data reconciliation is a problem. So the pain is remember data coming from multiple sources. So maybe the chapters are collecting the money, and then there needs to be some kind of da uh, data transfer up to HQ. Um, oftentimes we see this done on an annual basis which is absolutely crazy. It, it takes uh, um, the entire year before you know new information up at HQ, which makes it a lot harder to get smarter with your membership. Um, so when it comes from multiple sources, there's a good chance that your chapters are using multiple processors. So the consistency of, of data and then just the economies of scale are completely lost because all the chapters are making different decisions. If your chapters are using something like PayPal, it lacks member IDs, so they're left to match up the actual transactions with the member data and then transfer that over to HQ. So you can see how data reconciliation becomes a big problem. Uh, we're we're uh, close to a, an association that has the chapters collect some dues, national collects their own dues, and then they created this joint membership that national collects and then rebates back down to the member. The time commitment and process to just manage all of that is absolutely crazy and very costly to the organization. All right, so getting that unified is a big step forward on providing better value to your members. And then if the chapters are entering data manually into the AMS, um, again, if they're not collecting it the same way, if they all have different sign-up forms with different data they're collecting, um, and it's even simple things like the salutation of a name. So if uh, my form is, you know, first and last name on the same field versus uh, first name in one field, last name in the, the second field, that's already a data headache when you're transferring data over to the national organization. These small things that are so simple to take care of uh, in the sense of technology, um, it's not easy getting the checkers on board, I know that, but the, the importance of it, um, there's so much time wasted on data reconciliation. So the end goal is to tie a unique member ID to the payments. So you can see what they paid for, you can see who it is, and you can see how much money is owed to each level of the organization. That is the end goal that you need to get to. The chapter portals tie to the HQ AMS. So the second part of that is how can we provide a unified way for the chapters to collect this information and be able to bill these members but then if they're all running their own systems and it's too expensive to have an a the same AMS at HQ as well as the chapters, how do we tie that data in um, and hopefully near real time into your national AMS or associ association management software? And then an integrated payment processor goes along with that. We need to get uh, um, a unified way to collect all of this money and move it throughout the organization. That all sounds great. But how, how do we do that? So first off, let's, let's investigate the role of member IDs right now. How does it currently work at your association? Okay, so if, if you look at, um, uh, if you don't know, uh, what I would do is set up a meeting with your head of IT. What do they know right now? How, how on board are they with a project like this? Because most of the IT directors out there usually aren't given a lot of love, right? They don't have a lot of people on their team. So if you have a project that can strengthen the, the data infrastructure inside your organization, the IT directors are usually jumping up and down, excited for the opportunity to do something like that. And then seamlessly update member records tied into HQ AMS. So if we can investigate what those roles are, let's sketch out. You need to sketch out how can we collect this information and money? How can we um, put a unified system and process in place to um, actually uh, uh, bill on a recurring basis, annual, however you do it, um, at the chapter level and HQ level, 
And then how do we share all of those uh, um, funds and all of that data into every one system? You want to get uh, have accessibility for everybody at the chapter and HQ level and have those funds and data seamlessly move throughout the organization. I see somebody uh, raise their hand here on the GoToMeeting. If you got a question, please type it in uh, to, to the question so we can make sure we answer them for you. Um, uh, Scott said, I resemble that remark. Hey, Scott, good seeing you in here, man. Um, and I know you're working on this, Scott. You're one of the CRPs that understands the value of this for the organization, so kudos to you, man. And then talk to your accounting team. What we find is there's often so much pain at the, uh, um, uh, on the accounting team uh, for the way that they do a bunch of different activities, often trying to reconcile things with the membership team, uh, and then on adding the layer of chapters, there's a lot of pain there that you can kind of form this task force inside your organization to make this a priority. And again, meet with other staff, um, and obviously, as you hear me preach, to create a working group with your chapter reps to identify problems and solutions. I'll give you an example on this. So. Um, uh, it, this is a really important one to pay attention to. There's a really big organization. Uh, we're, we were lucky enough to work with them. They have 700 plus chapters, fully federated. Chapters collect the money and send um, a per capita up to either the state, um, if they have a state, or they send it up to national. Uh, and the process was an absolute nightmare. The headquarters had made the decision and said, this is a priority for us to unify this, so that way we can stop spending so much time on it um, and, and, and in that, we believe we can grow membership better because we can take that time and reallocate it towards better services for the chapters to grow membership, um, throw better events, so on and so forth. So what they did was they said, hey, chapters, we're going to offer um, uh, a few different variations of a form that you can plug into your website, and this will allow the, um, uh, for us to help you collect the money, automatically deposit it into the chapter bank account, but split the money that's owed to us automatically. Now, why would you want to do this as a chapter? Because the national at the time wasn't covering their cost of the fee. The chapter was collecting $500, sending a portion up to national via a check every month. But the chapter, the onus of the, the cost for the national's portion of the, the dues was eaten by the chapter. So this, when the national was willing to do that, it saved the chapter hundreds to thousands of dollars every single year depending on the size of the chapter. The chapter loved that. Um, and now they also didn't have to spend all this time as a volunteer for getting the funds and all of the data cleaned up to national on a quarterly basis. Um, that is allowing them to move on to bigger and better things to grow membership and impact the activities that engage those members. Extremely, extremely important. All right, so another challenge that's impacting time, both at the chapter and HQ level, is bank reconciliation. So as, if you look at the screen, different types of payment files from different chapters. If all of your chapters are collecting money differently, um, you know, through PayPal, through their bank, through um, authorize that not, through what, whatever that payment method is, you're getting different files and there's a ton of work that you're putting onto the chapters to reconcile that with their bank and then reconcile that with the national database. So it makes deferred revenue especially tricky. Funds are transferred from chapters to national on different dates, on different times. Um, it's, it's all over the place. And what we find is your accounting team, there's a few exceptions that come through that they can't figure out that are taking 50% of their time for a few transactions. It's, it's absolutely insane how inefficient this process is. So the end goal is to get a standard payment processor have one holistic solution for your organization. You've heard us talk about Starbucks and back in the 90s when Howard Schultz, the founder, he had already taken a step back from the company and Starbucks wasn't doing well uh, um, in the 90s. I think it was the early 90s. And when he stepped back in, what he realized was all of his franchises or his chapters were all spending time on things that, they were, that were common across the organization, i.e. Um, unifying the same point of sale system. This is the same as um, creating a standard payment processor. Once he realized that we should take away all of this administrative uh, back end and unify it and teach it to all of the franchises so it's the same, not only do we get economies of scale, but now you, there's no one, the, the franchises don't have to think about that anymore. That's the same thing that you need to do for your chapters is standardizing all of that. Synchronizing funds, transfers, and dates. Automate that. 
Um, and, and what can next steps look like for this? So organize if, at the national, organize this chapter task force to research standard payment processor challenge. We, we, when we do this with uh, associations, we find across the board that the chapters understand that there's a better way. They're just waiting for HQ to do something about it. Um, so as you're talking to your chapter staff about that, how does national get funds from your chapters? Right? Are they sending you that money monthly or quarterly? Um, or are you collecting it and sending it back down? And then talk to them about the challenges they face. Because often what we find is they're willing to unify all of that if you're willing to give them some kind of reward or incentive in return. So think about what that reward or incentive can be. Earlier I talked about the, that other organization with 700 chapters. Their incentive was saying, hey, we'll, we'll pay for our portion of the fee now, so you're going to save thousands of dollars. In turn, we're going to get the data in the same format across all 700 chapters, and we're also going to get our funds instantaneously. That was the trade-off. But it made the life of the chapter so much easier because they also didn't have to do that data transfer anymore, and it also saved them money. So you've got to find what those uh, um, correlations are to what's going to provide value to the chapter as well as the national. And that is a great segue into reporting and formatting. So the pains, and I'm sure you're all familiar, is assessing membership or finance trends and chapter performance, right? How it's, it can be incredibly challenging. In 2017, with all of the tools we have out there today, if you're not using your data to grow membership, to get smarter, to learn where to open up chapters uh, ge uh, ge uh, geographically, to learn what activities are working at certain chapters that if other chapters did, might help grow membership even further. If you're not doing that, I'm telling you you're doing it wrong um, or you're doing it ineffectively. Now, I'm not saying that it's your fault right now. This is my, you know, be what you walked into. It's just always the way it's been done. But it is time to take that data and learn from it and then help provide access to what you're learning so your chapters can get better at best practices. So if you're hounding chapter staff and volunteers for member and data info, you're already behind the eight ball. We want to automate that process like we talked about earlier so then we can work on analyzing the data. Okay? It's a new shift in the association world. Um, and it's, it's, that, it's another trend that we see um, the successful associations getting really good at data and analytics. And that's cross-departmental with your membership team too. Because if you're able to provide better analytics to your membership team from your chapters, they can use that and to grow membership and to grow revenues. Okay? We, we, we worked with an association where one of their key activities was events. But all the chapters did the events differently. So national collected money for dues and rebated back down. But all of the chapters ran their own event process. Well, the problem with this was there was no consistency. But it was very clear which chapters did it really well. And it was very clear that that was directly connected and correlated to increase of revenue, increase in member retention, increase in membership growth. They were doing better than the chapters that didn't have a very good process in place or weren't throwing events all together. So how can you, right, how can you help get a unified process in place Share those best practices, um, and, and, and through that, be able to analyze more of the data to help you grow. So the end goal here is to integrate um, accounting uh, uh, systems with national. It's not just even accounting systems either. It's integrating the data at the local level into the headquarter databases, whether that's membership in, info in your AMS, whether that's financial reporting coming up into the national accounting system. And the end goal is to provide a standard chapter uh, financial accounting process uh, um, so that, that they don't have to think about it. It's just automatically done for them. Okay? So what do next steps look like on this? Well, first off, do you know what your chapters are doing? Do you know what your treasurers are doing if that's their responsibility? Um, oftentimes we hear, Kyle, they're, they're in an Excel spreadsheet or their checkbook is their accounting system. Well, this is an opportunity to upgrade that for them, uh, to unify it across your organization. Talk to your finance and accounting teams. Do you understand the problems that your finance and accounting teams have? What are their pain points that they have as it relates to chapter finances? Do you know what those are? Are they reporting from the chapter to national? Is it the process of how they're rebating money back down 
to the chapters. What are the other departments at HQ, what are their challenges and pains? Because when you put a task force together, if you have the awareness and you've interviewed these people, you can help create momentum around the project by getting all of those pains solved with that project, okay? And then identify the current process costs. Ask them how many hours it takes in finance. Ask them how much money or inefficiencies uh, exist because of the way it's done right now. And then ask why they haven't changed it. Usually the answer is just because it's always the way we've done it, right? Which is a, in, 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 my, eye, in my head, you know, uh, um, my eyes light up when I hear that, and even at you know, Bill Highway when I want to change stuff. Because that just means that we haven't concentrated on it yet. We haven't made it a priority. So how do you make this a priority as a CRP? And then you're going to develop a business case for future investment in a nationally hosted system. Now, that's a, that might be a really scary word to your chapters. But what it means is you're creating a better process for them. So focus on their problems. Focus on what they don't want to do and take that off of them. If you do that, you're going to get what you want through this. All right. How are we doing out there? I see a bunch of questions still that we're going to get to. So even if I don't answer them right now, I'll, I'll answer them near the end, okay? So let's talk about the benefits. Benefits, what, uh, uh, what we're talking about here is developing a business case for future investment in a national uh, hosted system. How many of you think that's possible? So come, I want you to come back, and I know a bunch of you in here, so I'm holding this too, right? So James, Scott, uh, Cindy, uh, um, how many of you right now would love a nationally hosted system? Or how many of you are saying, Kyle, I don't see a lot of benefit in that? Talk to us. Type into the chat for us right now or into the, uh, the questions box. How many of you? Because if you set it as a priority, it's time to develop that business case. So number one, quicker and more accurate reconciliations, better reporting. So I want you to go to your accounting team and ask them, I want you to ask them what, uh, what challenges exist there. Um, sometimes it's deferred revenue. Sometimes they're spending an incredible amount of time on reconciliations. Um, almost all the time, they don't have really great reporting, okay? Find out what is uh, 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 bad or what challenges exist with your national accounting team. And then what about the national staff that have a level of access into a local system? I want you to go to your membership directors and your membership team and ask them what data would you love to have in real time from our locals? What do you need to, to help make you smarter to grow membership? What, is, what does that look like? And how can we develop a system, or what if we could develop a system that you got that um, uh, automatically piped into whatever database or whatever tools you're using, okay? So let's start creating some groundswell uh, from the organization. National provides technical support and training. So you're talking to your chapters now. You created your task force or your working group. Find out what, concentrate on the challenges and problems that exist for your locals. You're right, they're not going to want to give some stuff up to national because they, they view you guys as the big brother sometimes. But if we can add an incredible amount of value to them, especially if they're volunteers because they don't want to do this admin work, if we can alleviate that, then we can get national what they want. That is the crux of it all. And the national overseeing uh, data backups and system security. Okay, so again, that goes to a unified solution that you're able to roll out to the chapters that everybody wins. And, and the reason this is important is because now we can get on to the important work, and that is impacting members in our mission. All right? Let's see, I, I believe we have some questions. Uh, a nationally hosted system would allow us to better portray an ROI. Scott, absolutely. Access to the local only members would be great. John, yes, would love it. Kim, definitely want a national uh, hosted system. James, very tempting. I like that. Can local guys play a role in dues collection with a nationally hosted system? Uh, Jim, absolutely. So Jim brought up a really great question. There's a couple of ways of going about this. Um, so we see some organizations that will actually do an entire bylaws restructure where they change the way dues are collected um, let's, let's say that it was done locally and now it's going to be done nationally and money will be rebated down to the chapters. That's one way. That's, that's a long process. It's a very powerful process if you can get it achieved. But there's another way, Jim, and this is what um, uh, that actually we're doing with National Association of Home Builders. 
Um, what we did was, in, in, you could do this without Bill Highway too, so I, I'm not trying to pitch us here, but um, create a, a few different variations of the form um, that you can give to your chapters. Now, Jim, I know you have a couple hundred chapters, um, or actually over that. So you can give them all a form. If some of them have their own websites, they'll plug it in. If others don't, that might be their only link, right, uh, that they're giving to members. And then this is how they can sign people up now. Now, they could put their own logo on it if they have their own colors, however you guys have your, your branding and, uh, uh, images done in marketing. Um, and then they can have some flexibility in that form. Maybe they want to add a couple of fields or something like that because that local specifically likes to give out T-shirts, so they want everyone's T-shirt size. So there's some flexibility in that. Uh, most of your chapters in that scenario, I'm going to guess, have their own dues amounts and maybe even categories. So we're going to allow for the flexibility of that. All right. Um, when you do that, now you can have all of that data automatically piped into HQ, and you can denote which, how much money is supposed to go where. So this is a way that locals should absolutely be involved in the dues collection because you want to incentivize them, Jim. You want to incentivize chapters to sell membership but you want to administratively make it as easy as possible. Uh, uh, just a tidbit, and Jim, I know we've talked about this, but we have seen some successful programs out there, and I would encourage you to test something out like this with a small group of your chapters. What if, you, uh, um, if they're selling the joint membership or the membership that also gets money for HQ, what if you incentivize them more, almost ran specials? Like if they host an event, that you get, they get an extra X amount of dollars for every member that they sign up that day, right? Or maybe they get an, an, an increased amount of money or a $1,000 bonus if their retention is over 90% year over year. And maybe you do $500 bonus for small chapters, 1,000 for medium, and 1,500 for large. You can, you can band it that way. What incentives do you have in place to help them sell? Turn your chapters into selling machines uh, um, uh, appropriately, right? Because if you take off the admin work on them, they can concentrate on the things that help impact and grow membership. Maybe it's hosting better events. Maybe they spend more time on finding better speakers for the luncheons. Um, but if you have a unified process to do that, Jim, you absolutely can still have them collect all of the data and all of the money, um, and you offer a unified way of doing that still. Okay, So it doesn't have to be done at national. Jim, does, does that answer your question? Cindy said, uh, this, is, this is a big mountain to climb, but we worth it, worth the effort in the end. Cindy, you're absolutely right. Uh, what my dad used to tell me growing up, um, uh, he, he would look at me and say, I would say, Dad, this is too hard. And he would say, that probably means it's worth it, right? So sometimes the hardest things are the ones that, that are worth the most. And this right here, folks, as CRPs, this has to be something you, you've got to get to because if you improve this, everything else improves. Why? Because the way the money is collected is the foundation for the relationship between national and chapters. Write that down because it's so important. And if you don't believe in it, tell me. And I'm not going to call you out, but if you don't believe in it, I'd love to have a conversation with you on why. Because what, what we've seen across the board is the way the, the way the money is collected is the foundation for the relationship between the national headquarters and your chapters, period. Whether that's dues, whether that's events, um, if you're collecting dues up top and sending it back down, but your key activity is events, and all your chapters are doing that separately, that's the most important thing. The, the dues growth is a reflection of that key activity. So if you're not unified on the key activity, it's great that you have dues. That's step one. But you've got to get the key activity unified, too, because that's where the membership value is, right? Awesome. All right, so here's, here's another case study, um, and uh, we didn't name the uh, association's name yet, but we're building a webinar with them, so it'll be coming up soon. And so their pains, and I, I wanted to illustrate this, because you're not alone in this, okay, um, and there is a much better way. So the pains, uh, it took weeks to reconcile payments and data each and every month because of deferred revenue uh, challenges, the reporting challenges, and the manual data entry that was involved because the chapters all um, reported uh, uh, data up to national on a regular basis, but they all did it different. One chapter would send a Word doc, another was an Excel spreadsheet, um, another Excel spreadsheet was completely formatted differently, and trying to get that data in the database was an absolute nightmare. 
And that's something that can be simple, right? Um, you've got to control, you have to be amazing at the things you can control. That's something you can control. So if you're not today, make it a point to change that in the future, all right? The solution was data reconciliation, bank reconciliation, and reporting. So what do I mean by that? Well, what, what, once we're able to get a form that all the chapters are using, and if, even if you're collecting up at national, everyone's using the same form, or at least the core of the form that's important is the same. And then now we're going to tie that into everyone's database. So there's still access to all the chapters, to their money and in, in, in their data in real time, but now it's also automatically plugged into the, the, the national database. The chapters will love this because they hate, they hate spending time on getting reports up to you. And I know you hate going back to that herding cats. You, you, it is not a fun part of your job or your finance team's job, whoever's job it is. No one loves trying to herd these chapters and get data. And I'm going to guess if you just, if you've had a, um, a recent uh, uh, um, date where they owed you data, I will put a lot of money on it that you still don't have it all, okay? Or all, not every chapter did it the right way. All right, so we're going to jump back into a couple more challenges here. Um, and we're going to talk about challenges that are impacting your money. So sending dues that are owed to national, and this could also be non-dues revenue. So the pain that we talked about is the lack of visibility into membership. Uh, as a national, you're waiting on your funds. You do not need to be waiting on your funds. So if money's collected at the local level and they owe you money once a month, you we need to change the system where you're getting that money right away, okay? And then national can receive less than what they're owed. We kind of illustrated that example earlier where if you don't got visibility into what the chapter's uh, membership is, how do you know how much money is owed to you? Okay. Um, so the end goal is to integrate payment and member information into the national AMS. Itemize chapter and national payments through a standardized payment processor. There's ways to set up the system where everyone's on the same uh, um, payment processor, whether that's they're paying by bank draft or credit card or even physical checks. It doesn't matter. Maybe they're paying for um, uh, events on a mobile swiper in person, unify all of it. And then what you can do is um, when the money's collected, there's ways to set up the chart of accounts so you auto the, the system automatically knows where the money's got to go. And it gets automated for you in a very clean reporting for each level of the organization. That's the end goal you want to get up to. And then we can set up those automatic deposits. All right. So next steps, ask chapters what is challenging about sending money to national. Usually it's around the reporting. Um, if they're eating the cost, ask them, hey, would you be, ask this question. When I mean, you get off the webinar today, and this is, if this is one of your problems, um, ask this question to some of your chapters that you're close with. Hey, would you be willing to let us have the data and money um, instantaneously if we set up a way to collect it and we paid our portion? So we're solving the problem for you of um, uh, clean data, and we can automatically have that in your accounting system. And we'll, eat, we'll, we'll, we'll pay our costs. We'll pay the percentage for the money that you owe us. Um, will you, would you be willing to do that? Just see if they're willing to make that trade off. And then offer online training resources and coaching appointments. I know a lot of you in here. I know a lot of you do this already. But if you're not, make sure that that's, that's somewhere you're going towards, OK, is offering better training resources and coaching appointments. Here's um, a, a best practice. If you've created them and thrown them out into the world and you've checked that box and moved on, uh, you probably did it not the, to the best of your ability. You need to go back and get confirmation from your chapters that it was effective, either by seeing that they're using it or by surveying it. And I would say, and, uh, are they using it, number one? And number two, have you actually talked to them and say, hey, is this training working? Hey, when your new treasurer came on, did this help them get onboarded into your chapter? Okay, are you offering those resources? James or Jim said, um, older chapter members uh, wedded to Lotus spreadsheets or legal pads scare me. Amen, dude. <laughs> I've seen a lot of um, physical papers with uh, uh, chicken scratch on them as the reporting that was sent up to national. Let's get away from that, all right? Uh, and we also, you got to think about it. If you're trying to attract better volunteers, they want better tools, folks. So let's, let's make it easier on them to do that, okay? All right, so management of uh, uh, funds or mismanagement. 
So reasons and pains, unintentional. Chapters lack bookkeeping and financial experience. I see a lot of associations on here that have nothing except for one. I see uh, the tax professionals um, that don't have a lot of bookkeeping experience. So their volunteers are professionals in your industry that probably got nominated uh, for the, the treasury position. I heard one association tell me that um, when the chapter has a meeting, whoever doesn't show up is now the treasurer uh, because nobody wants to do it. So let's automate that for them. Intentional. So that's unintentional. Intentional is fraudulent activity. I'm telling you right now, if your chapters have a, their own bank account and there's only one signer on that bank account, you are exposed to an incredible amount of risk as an organization. Because even if the chapter has, has fraudulent activity and, it, and, and they're a separate entity, it doesn't matter. Uh, in the public eye, it all looks like the, the association, right? And then you're absolutely losing out on revenue. And the chapter is, is, has a loss of, of credibility. Um, Lisa, you said, you know, there's two payments going, one to the national, one to local. As a member, you're like, why, does it, why is it this way? And they're already discounting in their head your brand. Okay, so let's solve that. Now, Lisa, if you're telling us, well, how, how do I get my team on board? There's absolutely ways to walk through that. Let's, let's survey your chapters and figure out what they'd be willing to do so we can present a business case up to the national organization. Go interview some of those other departments like accounting that you know you have friends in uh, um, or, or membership with people you get along with and say, hey, I'm trying to put a project together to solve X, Y, and Z, but I wanted to learn are there opportunities to solve things for you guys right now? Because typically what we find is there absolutely is, and you just got to ask. And then guilty and or guilty by association. Um, chapter termination. So, we, we are in the, um, in the camp of it's okay to shut down chapters. It's good to shut down chapters that aren't working. But if you don't have the tools for chapters to be successful and you're putting the onus on these volunteers that don't know how to be good bookkeepers or financial ex uh, experts or don't know how to run really great events, aren't you doing them a disservice? And let's flip that. Wouldn't the organization be growing more? right? If, if all of that was easy and they just had to go out and connect with people in their industry, that's why they want to volunteer. So end goal, integrate chapter accounting software with national, all right? So set up a standard chart of accounts, write that down. Set up a standard fiscal year, write that down. I know it's not easy, but you're going to get it done. Um, and then provide a standardized accounting system and payment processor across all your chapters. This is right here, the holy grail in a jumping off point to getting everything else you want done, um, done a lot easier and faster. If the money is, is unified, okay, everything else is going to come along a lot easier. Now, here's my advice to you. Start small. You don't got to get all the chapters on at once. Uh, quite, quite the opposite. I would say don't do that. Get the early adopters on board. Have them show the value to the rest of the organization, right? Have, show, have them show how membership's growing after you took this work off of them. And they thought it was going to be scary because National has access to the data right away. But really, in reality, it wasn't. It was so much better because they got rid of all this work as a chapter volunteer or even a chapter paid admin. And now they got to engage more with the members, the people that this is the reason they signed up as a volunteer. So next up, providing training again and, and support to chapter staff and volunteers to alleviate that chapter leader turnover. A lot of this, people, is about getting them to stop working on the things they don't like working on. I talk about it all the time. It's, it, today's Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. Tonight, if I had a report due to headquarters, I, I, I went to work as a volunteer at my chapter. I came home, I took my kids to uh, the, the doctors or picked them up from soccer and then um, went to a recital and then made dinner for everybody. It's 9 o'clock. I'm exhausted. And now you want me to go reconcile data to send it to you. It's not happening. I'm going to wait till Saturday. And then Saturday comes and I don't have time. Let's take that work off of them. So what they're supposed to be doing is maybe just messaging um, uh, potential new members, right, for the event that's coming up next week. That's exciting. And we talked about the lack of bookkeeping. And then it's absolutely a lack of time. Uh, but when you make them do the activities that they don't like doing, um, the energy they have to get to the activities that you need them to do often doesn't exist. And then this is important. Write this down. Create a national and a chapter task force to visit chapters or reviewing the reporting. 
we just talked to an association a few weeks ago, and I love what they called it. Um, uh, the, the, the CRP, the Component Relations Professional, you, um, hooked up with their executive director. He got their executive director on board that chapters are important. That was awesome. Created a great relationship. And then they went on a, wait for it, a listening tour. I loved that. They were creating, uh, setting up phone calls and listening to chapters, their problems, what's going, they're going through, ideas on how they could grow membership. He sent out a survey to all the chapters, but then also picked some strategic ones, both that got along with national and didn't, both big and small, and geographically diverse, and they actually did on-site visits with these chapters. How awesome is that? Um, I think that was the best investment they could have made because no matter what comes of it, uh, the relationship building he's doing there is incredible. Someone that I'm going to call out that's in, is, is awesome at this is Patrick Algeyer at the Glo uh, Global Business Travel Association. He walked into a situation where the chapters did not like national. Uh, the executive director or CEO just got ousted because uh, um, of the chapter uh, uh, disgruntledness. And Patrick was brought in. Now, he was one of the chapter leaders before this, which is awesome. But he rebuilt those relationships because he listens. Uh, I thought that was so awesome. OK, we're getting near, near the end here. So keep asking your questions because um, uh, we're, I'm going to get to them. But uh, we were just talking about building a business case for this. So let's talk about some of these expenses. What an awesome imager. Uh, I wish my safe, I don't have a safe, but if I did, I would hope that all this money would be, uh, would be in there. Um, it's not, but I wish it was. All right, reasons. I digress. One party pays more than their share of processing fees. That's, if that exists in your organization, circle that, because that is absolutely a way to get your chapters on board. Chapters pay to process the portion of dues. They send it to national, and maybe if there's a state level, or vice versa. OK? Um, write that down, because if that exists, I promise you we got a way forward. OK? So end goal is to itemize payments through standard payment processors. Let's get everyone in the same payment processor to get economies of scales, folks. Um, does your payment processor offer the ability to accept bank draft ACH? How many of you? I want that answer right now. I know we only got a couple minutes. How many of you are just accepting credit cards? Versus how many of you are accepting bank drafts? Can you guys type into the question for me? I want to see some answers on this one. OK, some answers are coming in. The reason I ask, and again, the question is, how many um, of you are only accepting credit cards? And maybe um, you're going to tell me the chapters accept credit cards, but HQ accepts both, whatever. Let, let me know your scenario. Type it out for me. Because if you're not accepting ACH or bank draft, you're losing money. I want you to write that down. If you're not accepting ACH or bank draft, you are losing money. Why? Because it's a lot cheaper than accepting credit cards. And not everyone's going to do it, but it's um, a growing trend in the financial payments industry that people are comfortable with paying by bank. Okay. Now, the argument against this is, well, Kyle, people want rewards in their credit cards, and you're right. Or you might be saying, Kyle, we have businesses paying us, and they, you know, they always pay by our credit card. I get it. The trend is, is changing. And if you're not accepting it at all, well, then um, there's at least a percent that will do it. I promise you that. We, got, we see chapters get up to 40 50% um, usage for ACH. Uh, credit cards are wildly expensive compared to ACH. Okay? So that's an automatic uh, uh, um, uh, project through all of this that you can save money. So you can go to your CFO and say, hey, I don't know how many people are going to do ACH. But say it's 10%. How much money a year is that to us? We were just talking to an association where every department had a 1% budget cut. Well, what if we flipped that on its head and we said, well, if we start accepting ACH, will that get the budget that we need to get to? Uh, um, or will that kind of close that gap? Sorry, I just skipped ahead of you guys. Um, so write that down. That's, that's a really big one. Okay? And actually, I'm seeing some of these answers right now. Uh, let's read them off. So, uh, Scott, we do, we do credit cards and POs. So, Scott, write that down because I know not everyone's going to do ACH. But, gosh, if you just got 10 to 20% of it, you'd be make, saving your company so much more money. Uh, uh, Blaine, we accept credit cards and checks. James, credit cards and checks. Cindy, not accepting bank drafts currently. James, okay. So, guys, write that down. Like, that is an, a no-brainer. Um, and I'll, I'll send you after this, I'll find the articles that I read on payments.com that talks about the growing trend, that 
um, consumers are already pretty comfortable with it uh, because I got my you know bank account hooked up to PayPal and things like that. But um, uh, uh, in, in Amazon actually too. But you're a nonprofit. There's a story to be told there, saying, "Hey, we don't want to raise dues. We don't want to raise the money that we're, we're collecting from you. If you do bank draft, that saves us money. We don't want to have to pay the credit cards. If we don't have to. Um, so keep that in mind, okay? Uh, that's that's a that's a no-brainer. So whatever task force you put together, there's one right there. All right, we're running short on time here, okay? So I might go a little quick through some of these slides because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. But the case studies that we've been talking about. Uh, wanting to receive funds faster uh, and take the burden off chapters. It's so important. The need, additional oversight due uh, to lack of financial savviness of chapter leaders and volunteers, which is almost at every volunteer chapter led that we see. Okay? Um, and then the want, standardized data processes across the organization. The need, receive faster funds, reduce costs for individuals. We're sharing, we're going to give you this PowerPoint after the uh, webinar today. So you can use these slides, you know, make them your own to uh, um, create that, that business case study at the national organization, okay? All right, how, how are we doing out there right now? This, this, is a, this is a biggie, this is a big topic. I love this, this, if you create a business case, by the way, use this slide right here. The do, you can absolutely use it, we give, you, we give you permission. Do's challenges that are impacting your ability to prepare for the future, and then fill in the blank. Your ability to grow, your ability to retain better, your ability to attract better volunteers, the challenges around how you collect money and share funds throughout the organization is hurting you if you don't, if you're not doing it effectively. All right, um, and this this looks like <laughs> Mr. Carmen. I'm going to call you out. This looks like Mr. Uh, Jim Carmen here. Help, help, help! In some of those scenarios, you're you're an incredible CRP. Uh, but I, I can see that some of these challenges they make us feel like we're in a hole. And, and we can't get to the key activities because we're already behind based on the way that we're collecting dues. And guess what? The actual reason that your dues are being collected this way, do you know the actual reason? It's because it's always been this way. There actually isn't a good reason. People will argue it. It's just because that's the way they do it and people are uncomfortable with change. We're going to get them over that, okay? And we're going to get you better off. But the reason it is is because the reason it always has been. That needs to change. Um, all right, national resources allocation and support of chapters. Uh, I'm going to just uh, uh, quickly touch on this. Uh, the lack of transparency with chapters and national is something that, that we're also going to change. Um, this is going to allow you, once you unify the money, it's going to allow you to incentivize your chapters and your chapter volunteers further. I'm going to make an ask to everyone real quick. If anybody would be willing to do a, uh, um, uh, a test with us, we, we're looking for an association where, and, and if someone's out there already doing this, I'd, I'd actually just love to learn from you. What if we offered incentives to the volunteers as individuals? Maybe $100 Amazon gift cards or something. Or if they were able to grow revenue um, you know, through X, Y, and Z, through the tools that you give them, what about rebate, what about incentivizing the volunteers? So there could be a chapter incentive. What about volunteer incentives? Is that a no-no? Um, because I, I feel like that would be something, there's probably some, unintended consequences that that's why I'm, I'd love to learn um, if it's a test but could you imagine uh, uh, if members uh, or your volunteers your officers could actually uh, not make a ton of money not gonna become rich but there's a financial incentive like how much easier would it be to, to, to get better volunteers um, and if if you're giving them a little bit of a cut but you're growing membership isn't it a win for everybody so the end goal, standard reporting, I'm going to actually go through this real quick because we're at our time here. Uh, we talked about volunteers. Again, we'll send this out, okay? Sorry that we uh, ran a little bit over. I got excited today. I'm sorry. Um, so some trends here. Uh, you can notice a, a trend in the next steps, right? It's often hard to push down a solution um, onto the chapters, okay? It's hard to get buy-in and cooperation without chapters or our participation. All right, so the next steps in that trend, chapter representatives need to be diverse. So let's create that working group and task force. I know there's a, a two associations in here that we're working with right now that have created working groups. We're going to have calls with their working group soon, and we're going to help them work through the, the chapter's feedback. You start with them. Don't make it about HQ first. Make it about them. What can make their life better? 
with the uh, uh, ultimate goal of aligning what you're trying to do. All right, and then go to the national staff, different departments. You, I'm going to guess most of the people in here are component relations. You are CRPs. Um, but what about accounting? What about membership? What about IT? What about your executive director? Do they understand the value of chapters? Are they asking you why do we even have chapters? Can you take them out to lunch once a month um, and talk them through uh, what's going on in the industry to get them excited about a project? You need to be doing this if not because this is very important to get buying from everybody so when you go to make this a project, there's value at every level of the organization at HQ. Obviously, chapters come first. National is going to get what they want once we learn how we can get chapters to adopt. And so, so, so here's some guiding principles for national chapter discussions. Agree upon common goals. Acknowledge the value each partner or player brings to the, to the table. And discuss the good but also the bad and the ugly. Let the chapters vent, okay? And set yourself up as the conduit. Hey guys, I'm here to help. You know what, you're right. National hasn't always done the right thing. I'm here to change that. Or I am going to be an advocate for you as chapters to, to, to become better. And I'm going to work and make study or case studies and I'm gonna make business cases to National to invest in you, okay? And then understand the reasons for the resistance to change. So if somebody's resistant, ask questions. Um, we've talked about this before, but write it down again because it's important. Seek to understand before you seek to understand or be understood. All right. Seek to understand them. Understand their challenges. Uh, um, understand why they're so emotional about this relationship with National. And there's there's often answers on how you can reposition that. Hey. You're mad at the last CRP. I knew I'm here to I'm in, improve this. Tell me what that looks like for you as a chapter, right? And then seek to be understood in the sense that um, I'm not pushing an agenda, but hey, folks, here's the goals for national. If I can align what you're telling me here today as chapters with what national wants, guess what? I can get budget um, or I can try to get budget uh, for this project to improve this for you. And then Gosh darn it, listen and communicate frequently, all right? Over-communicate, give them updates, um, get close with them. That's very important. If you're not willing to do that, all of this is going to be a lot harder. All right, folks, ask your questions. I got some time here that I'm willing to stay, okay? Um, but uh, here's a little, I, I love this. We put this together. Our chapter's giving you a headache. I don't know if you're into essential oils, but we got some lavender, peppermint, and lemongrass here. Uh, we gave these out at what we are now calling the chapter roundtable. So if you've heard us call it the road show, um, we were testing out an idea of coming to each city. Uh, we did Chicago, we did Reston, um, and now we're doing Alexandria in DC. Um, and they have been going incredibly well, better than we could have imagined. And we've been asked to do this monthly. So we're going to be, um, we're just going to be facilitating, okay? This is about you guys. Actually, the last one in Reston, we had, I think, nine people or something like that, eight people from different associations that we ended up for 90 minutes. We brought food, we fed you, we gave you coffee, got you uh, awake in the morning, but the entire group just discussed challenges and, and projects they're working on. There was so much amazing collaboration. So this has nothing to do with Bill Highway, folks. This is about you. If you know us, we've been working our butts off to create uh, a community for CRPs, for people like you. So this is, um, we do webinars every other week, and we're also now going to be doing chapter roundtables every single month. Um, they're only open to, I think, 10 people, because if the group gets too big, we feel like it'll kind of get lost in the shuffle. So sign up right away, everything's free, and I promise you, I promise you, nothing is sold to you. Just like today, we didn't sell you anything. If you're, this is your first time of interaction with Bill Highway, I want you to ask other people um, that, uh, uh, that have been on our webinars and stuff what we sell you, because we don't. <laughs> um, we're just trying, we, we recognize there's nowhere for you to go to learn, because a lot of the events out there um, that talk about you know, growing membership, they do it in a lens that doesn't consider the fact that you have chapters, because what they don't understand, that makes it a whole different ballgame. You can't just send out an email to your members. You've got to go through your chapters, uh, so on and so forth. So these roundtables are about you. You can see we're doing them in two different cities that are close to each other, back to back, because we're testing out 
if your you know your business is in Alexandria, would you rather us just do one there and then do a different one in DC the next day? So that way, because we know how how nightmarish uh, the DC travel area or DC area travel can be. So two more coming up. That's next week. Um, sign up for them. They're a fantastic time. Network with other people. Learn from other people. We don't have it on here, but if you're a CAE, you get CAE credits, one and a half CAE credits. Um, if you're a CAE, tell us right now because actually you get a CAE credit for today's webinar. Um, you always get CAE credits for, for Build Highway content now. We got that approved by the ASAE. Um, Kim just asked, how do we sign up for roundtables? I think a link was just dropped into the chat, Kim. Do you see that? If not, we will follow up with an email, okay? But Kim, if you don't see anything, my email is kbazzi at billhighway.com. So if you don't see anything, just let us know, and I'm going to make sure that you get that, okay? Does anyone else need that link? Uh, we just dropped it into the chat. All right. So Jim, we had a very successful webinar yesterday with about two-thirds of our national chapter leaders. Wow, Jim, two-thirds, that's crazy good. Um, Jim, if you're still on here, uh, oh, he said he had to run. Please send graphics. Love the essential oils. Jim was actually at our last roundtable. I'm going to ask him what they covered in that chapter leader webinar because that, that would be cool to learn. Um, and then he's got two other people from his association that's going to come to the next roundtable. That's awesome. Uh, Tanya, I need a CAE credit. How do I get that? Um, Tanya, we're, uh, my marketing team already responded to you. We're going to be sending your information over to ASAE so you can get that credit. Okay. Um, Tanya, do me a favor. I'm not sure, and maybe my marketing team knows this. Once we do that, do you get a notification that you got the credit? Or Tanya, how do you do you log in to see your credits? Can you let me know that? Maybe just type it into the chat for me real quick. I want to make sure that we're getting confirmation that you guys are all getting credit for this stuff. All right, everybody. Oh, she just said thank you. I'm not sure yet. We'll let you know. Okay, uh, Tonya or Tanya. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, email, or you please email me, it's kbazzy, K B as in boy, A Z Z Y at billhighway.com. Um, let me know what that answer is. We'll ask the ASAE too, but sometimes it's not always clear, okay? Um, oh, you're sitting for your CAE soon, so need CAE credits for the test. Awesome. Um, well, I'm glad that we could do that for you today. Uh, come to one of the roundtables too next week, you'll get another one and a half credits. Um, and you'll meet a bunch of other CRPs in perfect, uh, person, which is great. Um, awesome. Oh, Cindy just said uh, she invited you. Awesome. Thank you, Cindy. You have been incredible, and it's been great learning alongside you. All right, everybody. Oh, so Cindy said, I got an email last time with my CAE credit. Okay, Cindy. So that came from ASAE, I'm guessing. All right. Awesome, folks. Um, thank you so much for joining. Scott, great seeing you. Deidre, thank you so much for all the work you've been doing. Cindy, thank you for being an advocate for us. Um, we're excited. We have some incredible things coming up. Um, if you're going to ASAE's MMNC conference in May, or if you're going to the ASC annual in Toronto in August, we're going to be setting up some really cool stuff, including happy hours just for CRPs. So you have to give us your CRP credentials just to get in and get free drinks and food. Um, but also going to be doing some other things to help further this community for you all. Okay, so we hope this was helpful. Um, we're looking forward to um, seeing a bunch of you in Alexandria in D.C. next week for the roundtables. Um, if you have any questions or you want to learn more about what we talked about today, um, please reach out. Uh, we have a lot of really great ideas on how you can improve um, this big challenge around collecting money and make it work for you rather than against you, okay? Um, we are over by 11 minutes, but gosh, we still have almost everybody in here. So thank you all, Kim, Lisa. Uh, uh, Tonya and Cindy, thanks for coming. John, Deidre, uh, Scott, Christine, Kelly, Steve, uh, and, and so many more. Thanks a lot, everybody. We will uh, hopefully see you next week. If not, you know another webinar is coming in two weeks' time. Uh, until then, this is, again, Kyle Bazzi. Appreciate it, everybody. Um, excited to uh, share this information with you. And have an incredible day. Bye-bye.